So it's now a little after 5.45. Reaction's been refluxing for a while. And you can see that it's a kind of almost a white suspension. Not even, not even that cream colored anymore. And we're at about 45 degrees. I lowered the temperature a little bit ago. So it's dripping. And we're done with the thermometer because we're not going to be heating anymore. And we're actually done with the whole reflux assembly. We don't need to keep it uh, dry anymore, so I can take off the drying tubes. That one's stuck. And the thermometer adapters can just get put away. And the drying tubes can get returned to the desiccator, so they stay dry eventually be used again. And we no longer need the separatory, well actually we do need the separatory funnel uh, because we're going to be using it to add the ammonium chloride solution dropwise. So I'm going to put the ammonium chloride solution, the 10 milliliters of ammonium chloride, into the separatory funnel. And we'll just rinse that out. We can use this same separatory funnel to measure our ether. And now we want to cool this, so I'm just going to actually scoot the entire assembly out by lifting this up and moving that out of the way. I can turn this guy off. It's cool enough to touch. And let's let that sit. A little bit of sand in the sink. And because I don't want to wait for this to cool down, I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to put this guy away and get out one that's not hot. bath and not have my ice instantly melting. And I'm also going to cheat by just using the Rotovap ice bath as my ice bath. There's plenty in there. Just scoop a little of that out. So I don't want to cool it too fast. I don't want to crack the flask. I'll just let that cool down a little bit before I stick the ice bath in there. And I'm going to measure out 10 milliliters of ether, which I'll use for the second extraction. Got this beaker that I had water in it before, so I'll use that for under the step funnel. Now, we're going to end up with a lot of salt and it messes up the separatory funnel work if that salt stays in there. So we're going to be doing a filtration of those magnesium salts using one of these Buchner funnels, like the ones you used in general chemistry, and that's a five and a half centimeter size. And we're going to be filtering that mess into a 125 milliliter filter flask. And for that, we need the larger uh, number four filter adapter. So there's my filtration assembly. <clears throat> Grabbing the vacuum hose. And obviously I'm going to want to clamp that. It's no longer necessary to have the condenser. So I can turn off the condenser water remove that while I'm waiting for it to cool. 
And since this had nothing but ether on it, it's also not necessary to clean it. easiest to get them off if you roll them back on themselves. Another cap clip. Put those in the back of the hood. And this guy. Let's get put away. So now that that's cool and of course my Stir plate's cold. Just kind of wipe off the sand. Stick that ice bath in there. And that will allow us to keep it cold while we add our ammonium chloride. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. And I'm going to go grab another clamp so that I can clamp this guy. And prevent it from falling over. well to put the clamp on there so it's pointing away from the clamp. So turn on the vacuum. Established a good vacuum. These funnels don't seal quite as tightly as the ceramic ones. Yeah, sand bath is cold enough. Put our sand back. Nice thing about ether reactions is they don't get very hot. So what we're going to be doing is adding this to uh, react with any excess base, kind of quench the reaction that will dissolve some of that salt, filtering out the majority of the magnesium salts, we'll wash with a little bit of ether, make sure we get our product. Then we're going to transfer that to the separatory funnel, separate our layers, and take the aqueous layer and re-extract with some ether. Something that I'm pretty prone to forgetting is to actually tear the round bottom flask that I'm going to uh, rotate the stuff into. So I'm going to grab a nice clean 100 milliliter round bottom flask and go get a mass on it now so we don't forget. Because if you do forget, then you have to clean and dry the flask and then weigh it. And you can't get a percent yield. So we've teared that. Stick this round bottom flask in there. And that looks like it's stabilizing at 93.373 grams. 93.373 grams for the empty round bottom flask. I didn't put a label on it yet. I'm not going to put that on until after I've gotten a crude mass. But we'll just set that aside. And now I won't forget to do it. So I'm going to add this again, kind of at a reasonable rate, maybe not quite as slowly as I added the other things. 
just to make sure it doesn't get too out of control. I'll just drip that in there a little bit at a time with vigorous stirring. Move these syringes over and out of the way. Both of these materials are volatile enough that if I just let them sit for a couple of days, they'll be dry, can be used again. You'll notice that it's getting pretty thick and viscous, and so it's trying to stop stirring. I'm going to shake it around and see if I can convince it that it would really like to stir again. Maybe a little the stir rate a little. I can always do it manually. You get a lot of solid. Sometimes it doesn't like to stir. magnetic field below moves too fast and the stir bar can't keep up with the viscosity of the solution. I can get it to stir for a little bit and then it stops. So it's done adding. And we can take the separatory funnel out of there. Click away. We'll use this separatory funnel for the extraction, so make sure it's closed. Let's hang it back there, ready to go. The beaker below it. And grab a F1 stopper for the top. And we no longer need the Claisen adapter. And that can be removed. later. So there's a lot of kind of yellow salt. Don't need the ice bath anymore. Just let that sit back there. And since it's obviously not going to be willing to stir, stir bar. You can put this guy away. Swirl it manually. So I just want to swirl that around and make sure it gets nicely mixed. Should be quenched. We'll remove the stir bar, a little magnetic stir bar retriever. Give that a wipe. This guy can just get rinsed. And we'll set aside to dry. Be using that again so I could put it away. Mm -hmm. 
So you see that we've got two layers, right? Our ether layer and our kind of aqueous layer, but there's a little solid that's not dissolving. I don't want that to clog the separatory funnel. So that's why we are going to filter it out. It's kind of dried out. Got a little bit more water to wet that and then pour this in there. And all at once. And we'll just add a tiny little bit of ether for this 10 milliliters. Just to rinse the nice little residue out of there. Cleaned and put away at some point. Filtering fairly slowly because these magnesium salts can be a little bit gummy. That's why we're getting rid of them. You see a little bit of kind of white powdery stuff on there. Not too bad. Well, it seems to be no longer dripping. So break the vacuum first before we turn it off. That's trash. Take that to the solid waste a bit here. Oops. And the contents of the filter flask. 